Hello everybody, I want to thank you for joining me here in the kitchen once again. And today we are testing yet another product. Well, it's not really testing so much as uh, a quick review and, uh, well, a macchiato. Uh, this year for Christmas, Shox and I done got ourselves a four cup steam espresso and cappuccino maker. It's a handy dandy little sunbeam thing. We used that uh, those Amazon gift cards we get from Swagbucks. Link down below if you want to check that out. And it only cost us about 60 bucks Canadian. Well, in theory, because they were all free gift cards. But anyway, it should have cost us about 60 bucks Canadian. So I thought I would do a quick little review here on the Kitchen Channel so you guys can, uh, well, see for yourselves and kind of decide whether or not you figure it's worth something like that for your homestead. Around here it was absolutely worth it because it costs us $40 to drive to and from the nearest Starbucks. So, yeah, very much worth it. We've already saved the cost in gas, just making coffee twice. So, let's take a look at the, I believe it's a Sunbeam 4-cup espresso maker. Take a quick look at the box here before we uh, take a look at the machine itself. Not too bad. I mean, if you get this, there are a few extras you're going to need to get. Obviously, some uh, proper ground espresso is a must. But also, it's handy to have some way to uh, measure the temperature of your milk, which, by the way, should only get to about 150 Fahrenheit. You're also going to need something to steam your milk in. I've got this old Vente cup from uh, my days behind the apron. Uh, still not necessarily a perfect fit, but it's it's the best we've got, uh, well, at the moment. Otherwise, everything you see here is included. There's a little urn that comes with it. There's the espresso filter and its lock-in, well, cup. And your coffee scoop that also serves as a tamper. Ultimately, this thing is not too bad. I have surprisingly few problems with it, and this is coming from somebody who... Like I say, spent 18 months behind the big green apron. So, let's get to making a macchiato and, uh, well, we'll chat about this, this little device. So, I have to say, I am surprised by how few problems I have with this, considering how little it actually cost. Hopefully, I'm getting this on the camera here. We need to uh, get a proper coffee can for our espresso grounds here. But I am setting this up to make four shots of espresso because, let's face it, my average latte, macchiato, I don't really do cappuccinos, or, well, basically anything involving espresso has four shots in it. Now this, in theory, you'd want to close that, but you don't when you're hooking it up, kind of goes in just under, and it's a little awkward the first few times you get that in place. But it does fit fairly snugly in there. So we don't have any grounds issues with this machine. And I think that is absolutely fantastic. Now because this is a home appliance. Doesn't hook straight into your water. And you need to measure each and every time. You are going to fill it up. If I were doing two shots. I'd want to fill it up between the two and the three mark on the side here. Which I don't think you can see from this camera angle. That's my bad. But for four shots and steaming milk, I want to fill this all the way to the top of the metal band. Let me just pour this in the back here. It's pretty straightforward. They do recommend emptying this out before you store it and uh, always unplugging it after every use. So there we have our water in place. We're going to want to make sure we've got our tap top back on here because it needs to build pressure internally so that we can get our steam going. So once our water is in here, we've got our coffee firmly in place. We're just going to tuck the little espresso carafe in there, plug in our machine, and then we have a dial on the back. Hopefully you can see where my hand is here. And you're going to want to turn it to the brew function. I'll show you what that looks like. You can see the little mug with the steam coming up on it there. That is now technically brewing. We can hear it starting to warm up. And I'm going to slip you back down here to watch as this fills. Now it doesn't take too long to get that taken care of, but it does take a couple of minutes. So you're going to want to leave your milk 
Well, pretty much until just before you're going to steam it because cold milk does work best when trying to get a good quality foam. The instructions, they recommend using a skim or 1 or 2 percent milk. I am a whole milk guy since I believe those natural fats are actually good for you. So that is what I am using and I'm okay with that. That does however bring us to one of my only complaints about this machine and that is the quality of the steam wand is not necessarily what I would prefer. I'll show you that in a minute though after we get up of course the furnace kicks in now to our four shot line there. I have to say it brews absolutely amazing espresso But I don't know why that's looking so thin. Very good chance I didn't put quite enough grounds in there. But we are getting a nice rich black that one would, uh, well, come to expect. So, as you get into this point, you're going to want to put your thermometer in your milk. We're hitting the four mark there, so we need to take it from brew and turn our knob first to off and then to steam. But before we do that, we're going to want to make sure our cup is in place. So with your temp nice and up there, get your steam wand as far into the milk as you possibly can. And you're going to want to just kind of move it around a little bit. Like I said, the deeper it is into the milk, the better off it's going to be. I've got a massive candy thermometer in this thing right now because we don't have a, a smaller latte thermometer yet. For the price, you can't really complain about it not necessarily being included. In case I failed to mention it earlier, we're looking for about 150 degrees Fahrenheit on our milk. And the less you move it, the tighter your foam is going to be. So that is something to bear in mind. Ultimately, the trickiest part about making espresso, well, there's nothing tricky about making espresso. The trickiest part about making quality foam for your cappuccino, latte, or macchiato is knowing where to keep that wand. And I try and keep it, you know, like I said, pretty much as far in as I can but I don't like it when the bubbles go up over the top of my easily cleaned steam head here. So we're at about 110. Just kind of bringing it up, bringing it up. I would like to see this steam wand come out a little bit farther and I would like to see it a little bit taller so that you can get a more reasonable milk steaming pitcher in here. But keeping in mind that this is for the home user who probably has no experience there we go that has finished off the liquid in here and we got it to about 135 degrees hopefully you can see that it is worth mentioning that you should always take the time to pretty much immediately clean off your your steam wand because milk gets nasty when you let it sit no, I will admit that is not the sexiest foam I have ever put on or into a coffee, but when you pour the espresso over your warmed milk with your foam, that's when it becomes a macchiato versus 
If it's espresso and then milk, that's when you've got your latte. All right, so I'm still having camera issues. Can't see the feedback monitor as much as I would like, but the real test is does it taste like it should? Does it smell like espresso? Yes, it does. And it tastes like a pretty good macchiato. So, is it a professional quality machine? No, not by any means. But for $60 Canadian, no less, you're not going to get a, a top quality machine. If I recall, the ones we used to use at the store were somewhere in the vicinity of twelve dollars or $15,000 per machine. Now, for its price, like I said, this thing makes excellent espresso and it's set it and forget it simple. When it comes to making your, your lattes and your macchiatos, Steaming milk is a bit of an art form, so if you've never ever done it before, do not expect a perfect cappuccino. In fact, expect to go through a couple gallons of milk before you get even close to the perfect cappuccino. That's not really the machine's fault though. That is just, it's an art form. It really, really is. People, uh, people give their baristas a really hard time and they expect miracles, but yeah, even with amazing equipment, it's it's not necessarily an easily achieved thing. <sighs> Hi, Lazarou. You don't get coffee, buddy. So, for an at-home device living in uh, rural Canada or as a homesteader or whatever, it sure beats the tar out of having to drive an hour each way to get to the nearest place of the green apron and get a decent espresso shot or get a decent macchiato, get a decent latte. I am thoroughly thrilled with the purchase. I know Shox is really happy to have it around as well. And uh, all in all, I would recommend it. I'd give this probably four out of five stars because the only real complaint that I have about it is the steam wand situation. Like I said, if it were a little bit further out and a little bit higher up, it'd be much easier to get a decent steaming carafe underneath that wand. Otherwise, yeah, I have, I have no complaints about this little Sunbeam 4-cup steam espresso and cappuccino maker. And I'd say if you see one, you know, grab it. It's, it's worth it. And uh, considering you're probably watching this down in the States, apparently most of my viewers are, it'll be even cheaper than that for you. So spend a couple of hours wages, get yourself the machine, save yourself the trouble of going to the big green giant. It's worth it. Plus, it's really satisfying to learn to make your own foam, so... On that note, I now have a beautiful macchiato to enjoy, and uh, I hope you guys have an absolutely fantastic day. Thank you for joining me today as I take a look at this little Sunbeam Espresso Maker. I will see you next time in the kitchen. Take care, everybody.